Harry here from Chat Spanish. So this happened. They'll be available at some point soon. Still prototyping at the moment, but keep your eyes peeled. Pues gracias, mi amigo Adam, for requesting today's video, Spanish verbs followed by prepositions. I'm going to take you through some examples, explain it very clearly. Then you're going to scroll down, take the free quiz in the description, and there's a link to a free downloadable PDF as well in there. So check that out. Then you're going to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave some comments. Let me know if you didn't understand anything, any topics you want me to cover, and like this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Spanish verbs with prepositions. Let's go. What is a preposition? That's a very good question I had to clarify when I was preparing for this video. And I came across this in a really good grammar book. It's in the word itself. Preposition, before position, before something else, before another word. And that's the way we think of prepositions. They are connectors, okay? So always remember, preposition is a connector. And there are several in Spanish, or well, there are plenty actually, and I've gone through them in detail in the free downloadable PDF in the description of this video. But the ones we're going to focus on today are the following. A, de, con, por, and en. This is because these guys, they commonly follow many Spanish verbs, as you will see. Another thing I wanted to point out is this rule. Verbs following a preposition are always in the infinitive form, always underlined there and boldened. This is a nice Spanish rule because unlike most of them, there's no exceptions. This is just true. So something to remember. And let's look at some examples of this. Acabo de comprar, te invito a cenar. So the two infinitives here, comprar, to buy, cenar, to, to have dinner. Okay. Acabo de, the preposition here, followed by the infinitive. A here, the preposition, followed by the infinitive. I've just bought, I've just bought it. I've just finished buying it. Te invito a cenar. I invite you to have dinner. So, verbs followed by the preposition a. These are just some common ones here. Acercarse a, to approach. Asistir a, to attend. Now, unfortunately, these verbs followed by prepositions just have to be learned. And for that reason, I've created a list on Memrise. It's free to use going through all of the most common verbs followed by prepositions. So there's a few more than these. They just have to be learned. So plug in some music and just take a look at them, go through them at your own pace. But they're well worth learning because they're so common. And a lot of people, uh, myself mainly actually, make some mistakes because they're not always intuitively translated as we will see. So some ejemplos with the preposition a. Comienzan a hablar. They start to speak. Now, the preposition a is usually actually translated as to, and in many cases, going back to the examples, this is true, right? Invitar a, to invite to. However, there's also instances where this is not intuitively translated as to. Por ejemplo, el agua sabe a ginebra. Sabe a, saber a, to taste like. Now, I always used to make this mistake, sometimes still do. I'd say saber como, to taste like. That's completely wrong. It's saber a. The water tastes like gin. Similar here. Suena a mentiras. It sounds like mentiras. A is translated as like here. So this is why it's super important to go through this list and make sure you have it clear. All right. Moving on. Verbs followed by the preposition de. Again, some common examples here. Dejar de. To stop doing something. Disfrutarte. To enjoy. And de, you know, as a preposition, translated as of. But as you can see, not always the case. Me alegro de verte. I'm happy to see you. Here, this little infinitive, ver, to see. Why? Because it's following the de, the preposition here. Acabo de, acabo de bailar. I have just danced. Termina de jugar al fútbol. The, he or she has just finished playing football. Right, verbs with con, which is usually translated as with. As you can see, amenazar con, to threaten with. Sometimes that's true. As you can also see, not always true. Casarse con, to marry. Contar con, to count on. So, some ejemplos. Maria se casa con Jorge. Maria is marrying Jorge. So, not Maria is marrying with Jorge, just Maria is marrying Jorge. Cuenta conmigo. This is a great phrase. I used to hear it a lot when I was working in Spain, when we'd be going out for drinks and I'd invite people and they say, Sí, claro, cuenta conmigo. Sí, yes, count on me. I'm in. So, a nice little one to note down. Sueño con comprar una mansión. I dream about buying a mansion, right? That's again, not intuitive. Sueño, I dream with buying. No, dream about buying a mansion. So go through that list. Más ejemplos with now. The preposition por, alegrarse por, to be happy for. Cambiar por, to exchange for. Now, one thing I want to highlight here. 
Alegrarse por, to be happy for. Remember we saw this, me alegro de. So, two things. One, the verb does not always have to be followed by the same preposition. And secondly, when it's followed by something else, obviously the translation changes. So here, me alegro de verte. I'm happy to see you. Translates as to here. Okay, I'm happy about or, or about seeing you. Whereas in this case, alegrarse por, I'm happy for. Okay, so the translation is different. Ejemplos. Luchamos por libertad. We fight for freedom. Comenzó por contar la historia. He or she started by telling the story. And finally, verbs with en, which is usually translated to in. Apoyarse en, to rely on. No, different translation. Confiar en, to trust in. Okay, that's the same one there. So again, go through these, but these are common ones. This one as well, pensar en. You would have seen that in the pensar versus uh, creer video I created to think about. So that's not that uh, common, uh, sorry, not that intuitive, right? En as about. Ejemplos with the preposition en. La receta consiste en tres ingredientes. The recipe consist, consistir en, to consist of, consists of three ingredients. And then again, this one, piensa en su hermano. He or she thinks about his or her brother. Okay, so that was just a quick example of them. You have to learn them. But there are also verbs that require pre preposition in English, but not in Spanish. Some ejemplos, apagar, to turn off a light. Bajar, to go down. You see the preposition here is in English, in blue, but in Spanish we don't need it. Classic, escuchar, to listen to. Escuchamos. El podcast, we listen to the podcast. There's no preposition a, which is needed there. It's just to listen to, escuchar. And that's that, chicos. So I hope you found that useful. As I said at the beginning of the video, these just need to be learnt. Refresh your mind. Click on the memorize link. It's free to use. Go, th go through the list at your own pace. You'll get used to it. And you'll feel so good when you whip out that saber a to taste like when most people are saying saber como. Ciao. And that was Spanish verbs followed by prepositions. Key thing, scroll down, take the free quiz, put your knowledge to the test, take a look, echar un vistazo al free worksheet, at the free worksheet, downloadable PDF in the description, and also go through that list which I was referring to in the video, which I made in Memrise, free to use, just has a complete list of all those verbs followed by the prepositions. So go over them, please, chicos, learn them. It's well worth it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It means the world to me. Like this video, leave some comments in the feedback as well. Let me know what you thought, if you didn't understand anything, or if you want me to cover other topics, that would be great. Check us out on Instagram, arroba, at chatspanish, chatspanish.online. Subscribe to the newsletter. Keep practicing Spanish. It's the best thing in the world. Un abrazo. Ciao.